Aloha, Bay City's Lamita. Welcome to church today. It is always so good to be together, isn't it? Even if we are online. You know, the social distancing, it is so hard to get used to, isn't it? You know, one of the crazy things about it is smiles. You know, we've all got our masks on and I'll smile at someone and they don't even know. It's so hard to connect, isn't it? One of the greatest things about Jesus is that it is never hard to connect with him. In social distancing, it just doesn't even apply to him. He is always with us. You know, we can be as close to him as we want to be. In the Bible, we're told to draw near to him and he'll draw near to us. I hope we can do just that today online as we worship together. Pastor Ben, he sends his greetings. Hey, he's had some setbacks, but you know, he's on the mend and he's looking forward to a full recovery in the next few weeks. I want to encourage you to keep checking our website, baycitieslamita.com. You'll find everything you need there. You can uh, check out our video update every Tuesday. It's posted. You can request prayer, on our, and our prayer team will be praying for you. You can give online. You can do that through our website, through texting, or even through the mail. You can go on to uh, request devos from Miss Nikki for the kids. You can even write a note to one of us if you'd like. You can join a growth group and uh, let us know that you're interested in that and we can we can help you there too hey remember church jesus himself is our one and only constant in this world only he never changes today we're starting a brand new series it's called stand hey come worship with us today
never felt when I felt me now. You all felt me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you up. song of worship it's called do it again but first I want you to remind yourself of what God did in your life that was so remarkable that brought you here to this point right now it was so remarkable you decided to change your whole life and move everything in your life around his name I want you to focus on that but it's okay to sit there and ask the father to do it again like a child come to his dad do it again do it again let me sing this one. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall, but you have never felt me. Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won But you have never felt me yet Your 
faithfulness still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Jesus, you're still enough And keep me within your love My heart will sing your praise again Oh yes, it will, Lord oh, Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Take over. Take dominion of that place. Whatever you did to suck us in, Father, do it again. Whatever you did to change us, do it again. Whatever healing you did, whatever fantastic thing it is, I know you could do it again because nothing is impossible with you. Do what, the, what happened with the disciples. Do it again. Change the world one more time. We all know it needs it. I know a lot of Christians are waiting for you to come back, but we need to be changed, each one of us, on the inside first. 
so we could shine as a light. And be so bright, we'll shine up a whole city by the power of one person. One person standing on a hill could be a beacon light for everybody. Only through your power and grace and mercy and example can we do that. But you need to give us the strength. Sometimes this is hard. Sometimes there's failure, there's pain, there's suffering. We have people right now in and out of the hospital. But you have a plan for each and every one of us. And it's always going to be amazing at the end of the journey. When we're done with this temporary stop on this planet Earth and we get to be at home with you. But right now, I know other people need to see you do what you can do. I know I need to see you do what you can do. And so do my friends. Please just show up and do it again one more time. We're here, your faithful servants just waiting on you. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, thank you for joining us at Bay Cities Lobita. And just thanks for being part of this whole experience as we go through church in a different way, but still try to spread the gospel and the power and love of Jesus. Right now I want to talk about praying and how important that is, communication and not only praying about a laundry list of your deeds, but just really deep down about how he could change you, who you can be through the power of him. So go to baycitieslomita.com slash prayer for all your prayer requests and, and also for the praise reports. And for those of you who want to give, you could do so by mail on the internet at baycitieslomita.com slash giving, or also by text. And that information is on the website. In our growth groups, how we develop personally, but together, haven't stopped. The online growth groups are going right now. If you want to connect through video in our online growth groups, and just email hello at baycitieslomita.com to start that up for you. Also, Bay Cities kids have devotionals that Nikki's putting together. If you want your kids to get these devotionals and something you, you guys could go through together, email Nikki at baycitieslomita.com. Thanks for joining us and check out this video. Welcome to church today. It's great to gather online together with all of you. I'd love to welcome you to Bay City's Lomita. It's probably a little bit obvious that we've been doing something different because of social distancing. While we're not gathering physically, the good news is we can gather digitally with people all over the world. Last weekend, we had an incredible time together celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And we've been so blessed and encouraged as we've seen people joining us not only from here in California, but also in many states across the United States, as well as a few countries around the globe. And so for those of you in our Bay Cities family, we welcome you to church today. And if you're new to worshiping with us, we welcome you as well, and we are glad that you are here. It's interesting today just to kind of look around. And if you're anything like I am, you may feel a little bit emotionally disoriented. All of the normal rhythms and routine in our life have been really incredibly disrupted. And you probably noticed, but it seems like everywhere you go, there's tension in the air. Events are canceled. The grocery store aisles seem really, really full of people, but empty of toilet paper. Maybe you've got your kids at home with you for the first time in a long time. And at first you thought this was going to be really, really good. But now, a few weeks later, your kids are getting on your nerves and you don't know how much longer you can take it. Life is not normal in a sense of the term. 
Unfortunately, we also know that so many people today around the world have lost their retirement as the stock market has continued to be so turbulent. And businesses are closing and we're facing incredible global economic concerns. Honestly, many of you right now may be in a very, very difficult spot. Some of you are sick, perhaps very sick. Some of you are worried about loved ones. Many of you, perhaps, you're working less hours than you would like, or maybe you've been laid off. There's so much pain and so much uncertainty. The bills might be mounting. Your marriage might be struggling. And because of everything that's going on and everything we're going through today, we've decided to start a brand new series called Stand. This is a three-part series as we head towards Mother's Day, and I couldn't be more excited about this. We are going to be walking through the life of a guy in the Bible named Daniel. His story is so inspiring and insightful for what we are going through currently. Today, I want to talk to you about standing out and standing up in the midst of quarantine. How do we stand out in the right ways at the right time for the right reasons? Because I believe with all my heart that the content of these next few messages could really impact your life in a very significant way. Because when we do stand out in the right ways at the right time for the right reasons, it can change the course and direction of our lives. The flip side, though, is true as well. When we compromise on the wrong things, in the wrong ways, at the wrong times, it can cost us more than we can even imagine. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at how do we, how do we as the church, take a stand for the things that matter most? This is so important during this season in our lives because this is not a time to stand down. No, this is a time, this is a season where God wants to work in your life and work through your life. We may be in quarantine, but that does not prohibit the advancement of the gospel. No, you see, it actually does the exact opposite. If we as the church decide to take a stand during this season, we will see our lives transformed, we will see our perspectives changed, and we will see more people come to love and accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior than ever before. Before we get going, though, I want to tell you where we are going in this series. Today, we're going to be talking about standing out. And then next week, we're going to be talking about standing strong. And then in the last week of this series, we're going to be talking about what it looks like to stand in faith. Today, though, we're talking about standing out. And to start, we'll be in Daniel chapter 1. And as we do, let me just give you a little bit of the backstory. So King Nebuchadnezzar was the king at this time. He was an evil king who destroyed the city of Jerusalem. And this guy, he was so evil, he didn't just destroy the city, but he burned their temple, their church. And then he went into their temple and took their religious symbols and crushed them, destroyed them, and burned them. As if to say, the worship of your Yahweh God is so obsolete, I'm taking out everything that even matters, anything that's remotely close to your worship of this Yahweh God, this one true God, I'm going to get rid of. Then, not only did he just destroy their city and their temple and all the religious symbols, but to make it even worse, he said essentially, I'm not just going to destroy your present, but I also want to destroy your future. He said to his leaders, Go find the sharpest and the brightest young men in Jerusalem, and I want you to essentially kidnap them. Bring them to me, King Nebuchadnezzar said. I'm going to indoctrinate them in the Babylonian culture, train them for three years. Then they're going to be future leaders in my government. So not only am I destroying Jerusalem and your present, I'm destroying your future by taking the best of your best and making them my leaders so that they won't be yours. Look what it says in Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. 
the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's servants some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. In other words, go find those who are voted most likely to succeed and bring those to me. Those are the ones I want. It goes on to say, he was to teach them the language. In other words, I want them to speak like we speak and literature of the Babylonians. I want them to think like we think. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after, they were to enter the king's service. This was a very intentional and strategic plan to indoctrinate these young boys into the Babylonian culture. In other words, the king wanted them to think like the Babylonians thought, behave like the Babylonians behaved, and believe what the Babylonians believed. This, I believe, mirrors much of the strategy of Satan, who wants those who are followers of Jesus to think like he thinks, believe what he believes, and behave like he would want us to behave. In fact, I believe Satan wants everybody on planet earth to disregard the teaching of Jesus and to submit and to surrender to the systems of this world. Today, while in quarantine, Satan is trying to attack you. He's trying to deceive you, to discourage you, to tell you you can't do it, to give you fear and anxiety. He's trying to lure you away from God's best. And he's trying to get you to live according to a lower standard of life. The pull of Satan is strong, but we must stand stronger. We've got to make the presence of God a priority in our lives. And this means seeking him, depending on him, dwelling on his word, and walking by faith and not by sight. And I would suggest that if you are, ever, if you are never standing out and you're always blending in, then you are not truly a committed follower of Jesus. Because when you follow him, you will be different. You will be set apart. The word holy in the Bible means to be set apart. Be holy as I am holy, God says. And there are times when you have to stand out if you are truly following Jesus. And that's exactly what we're going to see happen in, in the life of Daniel and his three friends. Let's look what it says in Daniel chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belshazzar. To Hananiah, the name Shadrach. To Mishael, the name Meshach. To Azariah, Abednego. Now, why did they change their names? Most biblical scholars would say that these boys were somewhere between the ages of 12 and 15. So we're talking a junior high right here, or maybe even a freshman or sophomores in high school. They are stripped of their identity, taken a thousand miles away from their home, crushed of all dignity, and the first thing the king wants is for their names to be changed. Why? Because the, their original names were all used and tied to the worship of God, the one true God. The, na- the meaning of their names given by their parents were the worship and the serving of God. All their new names, these were tied to the worship of false pagan gods. So essentially, every time someone calls you by name, there is a reminder. You're supposed to serve these pagan gods. They are stripped of their identity. But what we will find is that their new normal did not affect their identity in Christ. And because of Jesus, they decided to stand out and to stand up for what they believed in. Can you relate to this as we think about our new normal? Then they're going to change their diet. You're supposed to eat, like we read earlier, the food that was prepared for the king. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, that sounds pretty good to me, right? I want to eat what the king's going to eat. 
Whatever it is, who cares? Serve it to me. The problem was the food that was prepared for the king, the meat and the wine, were dedicated to pagan gods. And this created a real problem for Daniel and his friends because they wanted to honor and worship God or Jesus in every way possible. And to eat or drink anything dedicated to pagan gods would cross a line in their minds and be disrespectful to God. So, verse 8 is probably the key verse of everything we're going to talk about today. Look at what it says in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. It says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and asked the chief official for permission not to, defi- not to defile himself in this way. It's very interesting what we see taking place. I want you to notice this. And Daniel did not fight back when his name was taken. Did you notice that? Why? I'm guessing it's because he was like, hey, you can call me whatever you want. You can tie me to whatever God you want, but I know who I am. An outward name does not define who I am in my heart. You can call me whatever you want, but I know inwardly I will always worship and know and serve my God. My name is not worth standing up for. He did not defend his name. When do you take a stand? He took a stand when God's name might be defamed. I'm not going to let you insult this, the name of my God. I've resolved not to defile myself and eat this food. And I love this. He made a predetermined resolution. Before the temptation was even there, he predecided what he was going to do and what he would not do. He predecided. And that's why he was successful. You see, if he had not predecided, say you put the food in front of him, he could have done what I've done so many times in my life, where I've compromised and rationalized and done something that wasn't really right. If I were in Daniel's shoes, I might have said, hey, this looks pretty good. It may be just one bite. I might have said, hey, you've got, you've got to eat something. I'll do it just this once and God will forgive me. And hey, you know what? All the other Jewish boys are, are eating this too. And it doesn't look like God's going to strike them down. So you know what? I'll just do this. It's not that big a deal. I mean, I have to eat something. Anyway, I mean... Come on, it's some quality filet mignon right there. Surely God would want me to eat this. Maybe you can relate. But here's the key. He predetermined. He resolved in his heart ahead of time. He made a decision before he was faced with the temptation to do what was right. And I would argue, for those of you that are followers of Jesus, your success in so many different spiritual avenues will be determined by what you decide ahead of time. Many of you, and I don't know who this is speaking to, but I believe the Holy Spirit will personalize it for you right now. There are some things that you need to predetermine. In your heart, you need to decide right now that no matter what happens in the future, I will always do what? You fill in the blank. Or I will never do such and such. You fill in the blank. I pre-decided to serve God and honor him in this way. You see, in order to make a difference, you first must be different. You must stand out. If you're never standing out and you're always blending in, then you are not fully following Jesus. And that's what these boys did. They said, I've resolved in my heart not to eat this food that's been dedicated to these pagan gods. And if you're fully, fully following Jesus, you're, you're going to find the closer you get to Jesus, the more often you're going to find yourself standing out. And you know what? You're not going to be ashamed of it because of what Jesus has done for you. Watch the wisdom of Daniel in chapter 1, verses 12 to 15. Daniel says this to the government leader who is above him. He says, Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearances 
with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance to what you see. So the government leader agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Check this out. What did they not do? Instead of throwing a big fit or making a scene, with wisdom, they presented a plan, respecting the authority above them, and said, hey, can we simply try something else? You see, you can stand out for the right things in the right way, or you can stand out for the wrong things in the wrong way. And we have to have the wisdom. God, we have to ask, God, is this worth taking a stand for? Is this something, or is this something that's not a big deal? In Daniel chapter 1, verse 19, look what it says. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You see, God gave them supernatural understanding. These boys, they did better in school. They were more fit, and God gave them to the ability to the ability to interpret visions and dreams, and they literally redirected the course of history because they stood out and stood up for what mattered most. Think about this. Had they compromised and had they not had the courage to stand out, nothing historic would have happened. Think about that. Nothing historic would have happened. When it comes to living a life for Jesus, it is better to be remembered for standing out than forgotten for blending in. If you're always blending in, then you are not fully committed to following Jesus. We don't stand out to make a statement. We stand out because he's called us to be different. If the byproduct of this is a statement, then so be it, because we're going to take our stand against the devil's schemes. And when we've done everything else, we will stand out and stand up. Why? Because Jesus stood out and stood up for us. He died for us and he's called us not to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. Today, in light of this current season of life, where is God calling you to stand out and to stand up? I believe he's calling each of us in a certain area of our life to stand out and to stand up for him. But I believe as we pray and as we close, I just ask, pray and ask God, in light of everything going on in your life, where do you need to stand out and to stand up? Let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you so much for today. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity we have just to come and to be together as a church community. Lord, I pray today, Lord, for anybody that is discouraged, Lord, anybody that is hurting, Lord, anybody that is just struggling with life. Lord, I pray for those with depression and anxiety and fear during this season. God, we ask, Lord, may you comfort us. May you meet us where you're at. And Lord, help us to be a church, be a community, be a nation, and be a world of Jesus followers that stands up for you no matter what happens. In the midst of this quarantine, Lord Jesus, we ask, Lord, may you give us ways and give us ideas on how we can stand out and stand up for you in our everyday life. Jesus, we love you. We say thank you so much for standing up for us when even when we didn't even know it. And Lord Jesus, we love you. We worship you today. And Lord, we just say thank you for who you are. And everybody said, amen, amen. We love you, church. Have a great week.